The Willamette River is the 13th largest river in the United States, stretching approximately 187 miles. And with its tributaries, it drains about 12% of the state of Oregon, or 11,460 square miles. That's more than nine Rhode Islands. Most of Oregon's large cities are situated in the Willamette Valley between the mountains of the Cascade Range and the Coast Range. The Willamette watershed supports 70% of Oregon's population. The last 17 miles of the river wind through downtown Portland, Oregon's most populous and industrial city, to meet the Columbia River approximately 100 miles from the Columbia's confluence with the Pacific Ocean. The Portland Harbor Superfund site is located in the lowest 10 miles of the Willamette River. The Portland Harbor Superfund Project study area is here, from River Mile 1.9 to River Mile 11.8. The areas along both sides of the riverbanks have supported industrial uses for more than 100 years. Despite a heavy industrial presence, there are also still many natural areas along this stretch of the river. Forest Park on the west side makes up almost half of the upland areas that drained the river. Over the past 100 years, key industrial activities in the area have been shipbuilding, repair, maintenance, and breaking, especially during and after World War II. Pesticide manufacturing, wood treating, bulk storage and distribution of grain, timber, petroleum, etc., and a manufactured gas plant. Current industries include import and export shipping of grain, autos, and other commodities, bulk fuel terminals, rail yards, barge, rail car, and truck building, transportation facilities, warehouses, steel fabricators, and metal recyclers. Portland Harbor is Oregon's largest seaport, and it's the heart of Portland's industrial and transportation center. In calendar year 2011, the working harbor supplied more than 52,000 direct, induced, and indirect jobs with $3.6 billion in wage and salary income, which translates to more than $350 million in state and local tax revenue. In addition to its contribution to the local and state economy, the Willamette River, even in parts of the harbor, provides recreational opportunities like boating, paddling, and scenic viewpoints, and important aquatic and riparian habitat for large and diverse populations of fish and wildlife. These attract fishers, bird watchers, and other wildlife enthusiasts. There are many passionate groups working to keep nature and industry coexisting side by side here. I've fished the river for over 60 years. DEQ as the upland source controller has worked hard on cleaning up some of these sites. The fishermen don't pay much attention to anything but fishing, but when we see something we report it, but we need to get the river clean so that we can uh, have a good playground for the public. When industrial operations began in and around the lowest section of the Willamette River over a hundred years ago, pollution wasn't a problem. In fact, dumping waste into rivers, land, and air were common ways to get rid of it all over the country. However, people became increasingly aware that it was a problem when polluted water and air became noticeable and harmful to people's health. That's when environmental laws like the Clean Water Act and Superfund were born. Nowadays, industrial operations require a lot of conscious management and good practices are the norm for dealing with wastes and processes that could pollute. DEQ's been cleaning up sites around Portland Harbor since the 1980s. In the 1990s, DEQ asked EPA to help study the river because we suspected that contamination from the land areas might also be in the river. In 1998, EPA funded the Weston study, which indicated the five miles of the Portland Harbor initial study area were impacted by high concentration bullseyes of river sediment contamination near upland cleanup sites, and also a low-level smear of sediment contamination throughout the study area. In December 2000, Portland Harbor officially became a national Superfund site because of harmful levels of pollution found in river sediment. The main contaminants are polychlorinated biphenyls, commonly called PCBs, pesticides, particularly DDT, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, and several different metals, such as zinc, 
copper, cadmium, and tributyl tin. DEQ was already working on 15 sites when the Superfund listing became official. As more cleanup work and investigation got underway, the study area was expanded to the current 10 river miles. By then, DEQ had begun cleanup investigations at another 44 sites, and by the end of 2014, DEQ has been evaluating about 170 sites. So, what does it mean to be designated a Superfund site? Well, for one thing, it means that DEQ needed to stop focusing on comprehensive cleanup of both the land and the water. Working with EPA, six tribes that wanted to be involved, and other state and federal natural resource agencies, DEQ signed an agreement that EPA would lead cleanup of the river using federal authority, and DEQ would lead cleanup of all the upland sites using state authority. But what does having a Superfund site in our river really mean to us? Many local residents, particularly members of environmental justice and ethnic communities, rely on fish caught in the vicinity of the Portland Harbor for food. Eating resident fish, not migrating fish like salmon, is the chief risk to humans from the contamination in the bottom of the river. That's why the Oregon Health Authority posts signs in several languages and conducts outreach within these vulnerable communities to educate fishers about avoiding this health risk. Risks to the creatures that live in or feed from the river are more widespread than the risk to humans eating resident fish. As critters in the sediment are exposed and then are eaten by larger critters, the toxicity increases as it goes up the food chain. Biomagnification is how levels that wouldn't harm an otter or a human when in the sediment are increased to a level that is harmful to the top predators. So, what are we doing about it? EPA and DEQ developed the Joint Source Control Strategy in 2005 to standardize investigations, prioritize work on the worst sites first, use consistent screening level values for contaminants, and integrate the banks where DEQ and EPA work overlap. The goal of the strategy is to complete control of the upland contaminant sources by the same time the river gets cleaned up so that contamination doesn't happen in the river again. So what is this upland source control that DEQ is responsible to complete? Preventing recontamination means that DEQ must make sure contaminants from the land don't get into the river sediment again after EPA cleans it up. Controlling in-water risk means that even if land contaminants won't get into the river sediment, levels in the water itself must be low enough not to harm critters that live in the river or eat from it. Source control is an effort to deal with contaminated sites along the Willamette River that have historically contributed pollution to the river. So you're trying to stop the flow of any contaminants that might come from stormwater when it rains or through groundwater through the soils into the Willamette River itself. And that's what DEQ's job is here in Portland Harbor. It makes very little sense to clean up contaminated sediments in the river if you have riverside areas that have the potential to pollute the river again. So DEQ's role is really serious in that respect. And they have been working in tandem with the US EPA to control the sources so that by the time a cleanup decision is made about what to do with 10 miles of contaminated sediment, that the notion of these sources um, being potential contaminants to the river again is something that we don't need to worry about. The first step in source control was to look for upland sites that could be sources. DEQ was already actively working on 15 sites by the time Portland Harbor was listed as a Superfund site. As of 2014, DEQ has evaluated 170 sites for source control, implementing source control measures for one or more pathways at 119 sites. The next step was to evaluate the nature and extent of contamination and assign a priority based on level of threat. In Portland Harbor, DEQ identified the worst 14 sites as the highest priority and about 40 more are medium priority, which leaves about 120 as lower priority. Finally, DEQ aims to eliminate or control the threat. This means removing the contamination, cutting off its pathway to the river, or taking other measures to keep people or the environment from getting exposed. 
While the work tends to take longer at the most complicated sites, DEQ has temporary, initial phase, or final solutions in place at most sites in Portland Harbor. Schedules are in place or under development to ensure that all high and medium priority sites are completed by the time of EPA's in-water cleanup. So how do we decide what's a threat? First, we look at how the contaminants at a site could get to the river. These contaminant transport pathways are complete when they connect a source at a harmful level to a receptor. The pathway is incomplete if it doesn't get to a receptor. If it gets there, but at a very low level, the pathway may be complete, but it's insignificant. As you can see, there are a number of different ways that contaminants on land can get to people, animals, or the river and the fish or other critters that live in or eat from the water. Historically, industrial waste and processing material was dumped directly into the river. This is an important historical pathway, but since direct dumping doesn't occur anymore, DEQ's focus for current source control is on three pathways, groundwater, soil and bank erosion, and storm water. There can also be fuel spills from a dock or ship or air deposition onto the river's surface, but this is infrequent and mostly insignificant. So let's take a closer look at the three pathways DEQ is focusing on to control sources of contamination into the Willamette River. Contamination gets into groundwater when tanks or waste lagoons leak, or when contaminants are dumped onto the ground or into pipes that lead to groundwater. Contaminated groundwater may enter the river directly via discharge up through sediment on the river bottom or seeping out from the banks. Groundwater may also infiltrate into stormwater pipes, ditches, or creeks that discharge to the river. Under the properties around Portland Harbor, DEQ identified all the plumes of groundwater that could be contaminated. Plumes that need further investigation or controls to prevent contaminated groundwater from getting to the river are shown here in maroon. One plume we're actively working on is here at the Gasco site on the west side of the river right near the St. John's Bridge. The Portland Gas and Coke Company operated a manufactured gas plant here from 1913 to 1956. The process converted petroleum oils to gas, which was used for heating and lighting in Portland, but it resulted in contaminated soils and groundwater at the site. Primary contaminants in the groundwater are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, metals, and cyanide. Northwest Natural has been working on cleanup with DEQ since the mid-1990s, paying to investigate soil, groundwater, and stormwater, design and implement cleanup actions, and for DEQ to oversee the work. They recently completed installation of a line of groundwater wells along the riverfront to keep groundwater levels lower than the river, which prevents contaminated groundwater from getting into the river. Intercepted groundwater is pumped out and treated to remove contaminants, and then the clean water is discharged into the river. Portland Harbor has been a thriving industrial area for over a hundred years. Unfortunately, many of the environmental practices weren't as sound as they are today, and as a result, we have a lot of legacy pollution to clean up. My name is Dana Bayou. I'm a project manager with the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality. I've been working with Northwest Natural for many years now on a project that's intended to prevent groundwater from migrating to the river. Once we identified the groundwater contamination, we realized that it was reaching the river, and that was unacceptable. And so Northwest Natural and DEQ decided we needed to do something about it quickly. There are 23 pumping wells installed along the riverbank at the Gasco shoreline, and those pump the water that would normally reach the river out of the ground and prevent it from reaching the river. We have to pump on average about 250 gallons a minute. That's enough water to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool every two days. Groundwater itself exceeds concentrations that have been found to be a problem for uh, the river aquatic life and animals that live in sediments. We 
are proud to be one of the first parties in Portland Harbor to have constructed source control. We couldn't have done this without our partnership with DEQ. Before EPA can clean up the contaminated sediment at the bottom of the river, DEQ must complete our work to make sure the sites along the river are cleaned up. We like to think of it as the land cleanup before the river cleanup. Riverbank soil may be contaminated by activities on the site or from fill placed there to build up the bank or create more land. Some sites had large waste piles, landfills, or liquid waste lagoons that could release contaminants to the river. This happens when wind or river action erode the soil or bank, or when stormwater runs uncontrolled off the land to the river, carrying soil with it. When banks erode, these contaminants end up directly in the river. Remember, DEQ oversees work above the banks, and EPA oversees work in the river. But the bank is where the land and the river meet. It's not as clear-cut as it, as it might look today on the modern industrial river, where there's a river channel and then the land, and you can see easily the line between the two. In natural history and in tribal culture, there's a big wide swath of land where the land and water come together. And that's where you find some of the most important tribal cultural resources. Plants like wapato, plants like tule, and western red cedar. The water and the riverway is really important. Our people were river people. And so there's a really close connection uh, between the river and the landscape. And that's what upland source control does is it acknowledges that interaction between the land and the water. What happens in the upland area directly affects the water. And that's, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, that's really cool. That's, that's really cool for me to be a part of that and, and making sure that, that that interface between land and water is respected. I think from our role, we, we see an important connection uh, between what's happening to improve the quality of the river system, uh, working with DEQ. Our families vitally depend on, on the river um, for food and subsistence, for those traditional things that we use, such as the cedar and the cattail and the tule. So those to us are really important. And that connection, I guess, plays into the quality of life for everybody, not just the tribe or the, the communities that live along the river and use the river. When DEQ is working with a site to control contaminated soil in the riverbank, sometimes it makes sense for DEQ's work to extend into the river rather than having a separate EPA action in the same place. That's what happened at BP's Terminal 22 bulk fuel terminal. BP needed to replace their failing seawall to support their very large tanks, but also to help contain contaminated groundwater under the site. They entered into a voluntary cleanup agreement with DEQ, paid for the investigation and engineering, and also DEQ's oversight costs. BP constructed a temporary containment wall in the river and then installed a new steel wall behind the old concrete seawall. They also removed contaminated sediment and concrete debris from the old wall, which was now in the contained part of the river in front of the new seawall. This limited disturbance to the river and protected river organisms sooner than waiting for a separate action. I'm Tom Gaynor, I'm an environmental engineer with the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality and I work to clean up contaminated sites. This is a great example of both source control containment and removal of contaminated sediment from the river. The earlier that we can remove this sediment from the river and the organisms that are exposed to it, the better off those organisms are. This project had challenges and uncertainties that both parties had to work with, and we really worked together. I really appreciate BP coming to the table and making things happen, and DQ had to be flexible. 
We really wanted this project to happen, and it was important that it happened early, and it did, and that's why it's a successful project. The mission of the Department of Environmental Quality, also known as DEQ, is to be a leader in restoring, enhancing, and maintaining the quality of Oregon's air, water, and land. The Willamette River is the economic engine for the state of Oregon. Portland Harbor has been a thriving industrial area for over 100 years. DEQ is working at over 170 sites up and down the Portland Harbor to make this river a better place for the environment and for the people of Oregon. People don't talk about it much, but it rains a lot in Portland. When rain falls on an industrial site with a lot of disturbed processing areas, it takes contaminants with it over the bank or into a storm sewer system and then through an outfall into the river. There are up to 450 private and public outfalls into the Portland Harbor of many shapes and sizes. These can discharge wastewater as well as stormwater. Discharges for most outfalls are regulated under individual or general permits issued under the Clean Water Act. Compliance with these permits requires treatment and monitoring of the discharges. After being cleaned up, river and bay sediment at some Superfund sites in the Northwest has been recontaminated by uncontrolled stormwater discharges, which makes this an important pathway to pay attention to in order to meet DEQ's source control objectives. DEQ developed a comprehensive approach to ensure that, as it continues to rain in Portland, stormwater will not recontaminate Portland Harbor. Recontamination is most likely to happen when stormwater mixes with industrial wastewater and sewage and ends up in the river during combined sewer overflows, commonly called CSOs. In 1991, DEQ ordered the city of Portland to eliminate discharges of stormwater combined with sewage during heavy rains that caused overflows to the Willamette River. Portland completed the project in 2011, becoming one of the first places in the nation to control CSOs. Now, sewage overflows to the river are rare. The striped areas shown here are the CSO basins that drained mostly commercial and residential areas to Portland Harbor back in 1990. Industrial properties are located in narrow strips, shown in gray, adjacent to the river. Not all of these areas discharged through city outfalls, but the industrial areas that did were separated when interceptors were installed in the 1950s. Another important difference between Portland Harbor and other urban Superfund sites is that Forest Park and other open space make up the majority of land use in the basins that drain to the harbor. This means that most of the rain is filtered through forest plants and drains through small streams as it makes its way to the river, and it's really very clean. By the year 2000, discharges from the four St. John's CSO basins and two Linton CSO basins were controlled. Now, only stormwater discharges here. No more sewage overflows. In 2006, the downtown area and one basin across the river were controlled or diverted to the treatment plant. Some stormwater still discharges here, but no more sewage overflows. In 2011, the remainder of the CSO basins were controlled or diverted to the treatment plant. Additionally, about 600 acres of separated stormwater, shown in dotted areas here, were diverted to the CSO tunnels, including 165 acres of industrial area. Since 2003, DEQ has been working with the City of Portland on investigating and controlling stormwater in 39 basins that discharge to Portland Harbor. The city's work included extensive data collection to trace contaminants up the pipes and identify their sources. This information brought a dozen more sites into DEQ's cleanup program for stormwater source control. The city also implemented stormwater control measures and improved programs like the Stormwater Manual, which reduce stormwater discharges and ensure that ongoing stormwater is properly managed at sites throughout the city. 
also unique among Superfund sites, in 2009, DEQ published a guidance for evaluating the stormwater pathway at upland sites. Drawn from National Stormwater Monitoring Resources, this guidance shows a simplified chart of the process and offers templates for creating plans to evaluate stormwater and stormwater solids on sites and to trace and control potential contaminant sources. There's also a tool to compare levels of contaminants found in the site's stormwater system to levels found at other industrial sites. DEQ has been working with 170 sites within the Portland Harbor area to evaluate and control stormwater. As you can see by all the colored sites shown on this map, that's a lot of the area. About 100 of these sites have permits to discharge stormwater, which means they must maintain good controls, regularly monitor the discharges, and take corrective actions when contaminants are found at levels above the permit limits. Controlling sources in the stormwater pathway can mean preventing runoff discharges by infiltrating rain that falls in the soils of the site, improving existing treatment mechanisms, or adding additional treatment. For an example of how stormwater is controlled, let's look at the Arkema site. The Arkema site is located about in the middle of the Portland Harbor reach of the Willamette River on the west bank near the railroad bridge. It was operated by a French-owned chemical company manufacturing pesticides, including DDT, from 1947 to 1953. The site has been vacant since 2001, and most of the buildings have been demolished. DEQ began working with the site in 1998 to clean up DDT and other contaminants in the soil, groundwater, and stormwater. Under a voluntary agreement, Arkema pays for all the work and DEQ's oversight time. Soil has been removed and large portions of the site are now capped. DDT levels in stormwater were higher before the soil removal and capping because rainwater running off the site was exposed to contaminated soil. Just removing soil and paving parts of the site reduced DDT concentrations in stormwater leaving the site. The stormwater pipes were all abandoned, and two new channels were dug to convey stormwater from the site to a very large settling basin and then through a very large sand filter, and the water is tested before being discharged to the river under a permit. Concentrations of DDT and other contaminants in stormwater from the site are now very low. In fact, DDT in stormwater was reduced by 99.8%. stormwater samples and you can see we had up to 20 micrograms. When we first realized that the chemicals that were related to the historical productions here had impacted soil, groundwater, the river, we began to take action and start the cleanup process going with DEQ. It has to be built out as we saw Period of time from 1947 to 1953, this site had an agricultural chemical aspect to it, so they made pesticides, in particular DDC. Well, today's a great day to talk about the Arkema stormwater system because it's raining today. In order to uh, make sure that these dirt particles with the pesticide don't end up in the river, we constructed this stormwater system to remove those dirt particles and the associated DDT. I think the Arkema stormwater system is a, is a great example of a, a collaborative approach between DQ, Arkema, and uh, Portland Harbor partners. 
DQ's been wonderful to work with, been very helpful, they're, they're technically sound. We've knocked the DDT concentrations down substantially. Right now it's very successful, it's operating as we expected it to, and we're, we're, we're close to our objectives. We are working hard to control contaminant sources to Portland Harbor so that all the river uses, industry, transit, recreation, subsistence fishing, cultural appreciation, can all continue to coexist. DEQ has also been investigating and controlling sources upstream of the Portland Harbor Superfund site. We call the four miles of the Willamette just above the Superfund site the Downtown Reach because it runs through downtown Portland. The Willamette River is a jewel of the state of Oregon and an iconic emblem of the city of Portland. A highway was removed from the west side of the river through downtown Portland in the 1970s and the riverfront converted to a public park. Festivals and cultural gatherings now take place at the Waterfront Park annually. The riverfront paths along Waterfront Park and the east side promenade host daily throngs of bikers, joggers, skaters, and pedestrians. Forest Park supports hikers, joggers, mountain bikers, and equestrians with scenic Willamette views. A hearty small watercraft community launches kayaks, canoes, dragon boats, wave runners, and motorboats daily from landings and parks. Urban dwellers marvel at river scenes from their balconies along the river or from perches atop the hills. The cultural, recreational, and economic significance of the Lower Willamette River as a focal point of Portland life cannot be overstated. Also since the 1980s, DEQ has been working with sites and partners to investigate and clean up areas of the downtown reach to stop contamination from getting into the river and to improve and sustain the many uses of the river throughout downtown Portland. So far we've removed or capped sediment contaminated with PCBs, PAHs, and dioxins from three areas in the river and are nearing completion on three more. We've also completed source control efforts at six properties and stormwater discharges have been reduced or eliminated from municipal outfalls in the area. Contaminant concentrations in the river through downtown are much lower than in Portland Harbor, approaching background levels, and there are no longer any ongoing sources of contaminants. Therefore, DEQ concluded that once Portland Harbor sediment is cleaned up, it won't be contaminated again from inputs from the downtown reach flowing into it. In November 2014, DEQ submitted a report to EPA that documented DEQ's use of state cleanup authorities to identify potential sources of contaminants to the river and remove or control them. DEQ comprehensively applied the DEQ-EPA Joint Source Control Strategy to evaluate all pathways that could take contaminants to the river. The three main pathways are soil and bank erosion, groundwater, and stormwater. DEQ identified about 500 commercial and industrial properties around the Superfund reach of the river and screened in 168 sites, about 35%, for further evaluation. DEQ completed source control evaluations and implemented controls on one or more pathways at 119 of the sites, about 25% of the properties surrounding Portland Harbor. The report briefly summarizes the issues at about 170 sites and source control efforts completed or in process. The report also provides site-by-site -site determinations of the potential for the river to become recontaminated by these upland properties after EPA cleans it up. The report presents information on all 170 sites, broken up into nine geographic regions. The boundaries are based on drainage basins and historical districts and neighborhoods. For an example, let's take a look at the Doan Lake Wilbridge Georegion map. Source control status and details for each site in the georegion are expanded in the text and tables of the report. Each georegion map provides a lot of information in a snapshot, and it takes a little bit of time to get oriented. There is a legend to help interpret what the symbols represent. For example, 
In the Don Lake Wilbridge Georegion map, we see the location in the harbor and by river miles, and it includes EPA's sediment areas of potential concern and any early action sites. It shows all potential stormwater outfalls, many of which are no longer active, including the 39 city outfalls, which drain about 50% of the study area. It shows an ODOT project running throughout the study area and the outfalls it drains to. It shows groundwater plumes, shaded red, yellow, or blue, reflecting decreasing severity of threat to the river in relation to progress on control. It shows bank areas that need control. And it shows source control measures that are currently in place. The geographic region site tables present a quick overview of all the sites in each area by listing each site name and the DEQ Environmental Cleanup Site Information, or ECSI, database number where more information on each site is available. The contaminant transport pathways evaluated, the priority DEQ initially assigned to each pathway in order to plan our work to ensure our best efforts were aimed at the worst sites first. Source control measures applied where needed and when. When and how source control decisions are documented and DEQ's determination of the site-specific potential for recontamination. DEQ worked on high, medium, and low priority sites at the same time. It's important to note that DEQ did not change site priority designations based on progress made at the site. Instead, the tables tell the story of source control at each site by looking at the initial priority, what was done at the site, and then the recontamination potential. The extensive removal and capping of contaminants at the McCormick and Baxter site turned this high-priority threat to the river into a low potential for recontamination. Monitoring of the effectiveness of these measures over the last 10 years has demonstrated that recontamination is not happening from this site. The report concludes that potential contaminant sources at the properties around the Portland Harbor reach of the river have been identified and source control work is complete at most of the 170 sites investigated. The closing sections of the report include tables to track completion of planned actions and monitoring to demonstrate that sources of contaminants to the river have been effectively stopped. DEQ will continue to coordinate with EPA to ensure completion of effective source control and to develop and implement a plan to monitor and manage any threats to the in-water cleanup from the surrounding properties or from upstream. EPA requested the source control summary report from DEQ so that they could get a complete picture of the status and effectiveness of controls in place before cleaning up the river. As the DEQ source control process and EPA in-water investigation process have moved forward in parallel, we're now at the point where EPA is developing the proposed plan for remediation of the river. The public has the opportunity to comment on EPA's proposed plan, which is anticipated in the spring of 2016. Understanding the source control work described in DEQ's Portland Harbor Upland Source Control Summary Report will help the public understand this complex project so they'll be better able to provide meaningful comments on the proposed cleanup plan. DEQ anticipates close coordination with EPA on tracking the continuing progress of source control at sites during development of EPA's proposed plan. DEQ will publish an update to the report near the time of EPA's proposed plan or record of decision. To get a copy of DEQ's summary report, for more information, or to sign up to receive email notices about Portland Harbor, visit DEQ's website. For more information on individual sites, use the site-specific ECSI number to search DEQ's Environmental Cleanup Site Information Database. Follow DEQ on Twitter and Facebook.